Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of today at Practice 40. In this episode, you will get to know our trainers who are affiliates of the Practice 40 advisory. Today, we will be speaking to Susan Tay, Mylene Schwa, Christian Von Bombach, Rodel Taton and Marcus Lim. And I am your host Shukrina Salam from OTP Law Corporation, an affiliate of Practice 40. Let me now introduce our trainers to you. First up, we have Susan, who is a certified mediator with the Singapore International Mediation Institute, a mediator with the Singapore Mediation Centre and the Law Society of Singapore. She is also the founder of OTP Law Corporation and co-founder of Practice 40. She wears several other hats as parenting coordinator, collaborative family lawyer and a mediation advocate. Next, we have Mylene, who is the Managing Director of OTP Law Corporation, a mediator, a mediation advocate and Practice Forte's co-founder as well as its program's initiator and developer. Next up, we have Christian, who is an accredited mediator with the German Federal Mediation Association, the MIG International Mediation Centre for Family Conflict and Child Abduction, as well as the Singapore International Mediation Institute. Christian is the founder of Bombach Mediation and an independent lecturer for intercultural communication and mediation at the Hamburg University of Applied Science, Osaka University and other universities. Next, we have Rodell, who is a certified mediator, a dean at the Graduate School of Law San Sebastian Recoletas in Manila, Philippines, founder of Taton Law, and a consultant in the Alternative Dispute Resolution Unit of the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. And finally, we have Marcus, who is a certified mediator with the Singapore International Mediation Institute, as well as a mediator with the Singapore State Courts and the Singapore Mediation Centre. Marcus is also a lecturer at the NUS Faculty of Law and trains for the Civil Service College. So, now that you know a little bit about our trainer's professional background, let us get to know them personally with some fun questions. I watched the Expanse uh, series on uh, science fiction series. It was quite quite interesting. I, I watched the, uh, the the newest Korean zombie series. Um, <laughs> all of us are dead. Yeah, all of us are dead. Yes, that's the one. That's the one. Mm-hmm. Very very interesting choices. I think our movie choices say quite a bit about us. Actually, if um, life is a movie, then I only watch the news. <laughs> I'm sorry, you are, have to be honest since you are also being honest. <laughs> it's true, we only watch the news. I love the news. Rodell, is yours Crazy Rich Asian? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, the Philippine politics as, as, uh, oh, that's as, good. Uh, as a movie. But uh, I watched the latest, the series on Manifest. Um, next question. In this group, if you had to pick one person you would rather be stranded with on a deserted island, who would you pick? Do we pick, pick you, pick from, Do we pick from this room? Do we pick I'm, this I'm room? not an option. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we pick from this room or anyone at all? Um, from this group, yeah, from this room. Oh, from this group. I was gonna say like Arnold or something. Maybe, maybe Mylene, I think she would have the craziest ideas to get uh, yes, from, from, yes. from the island. Thank you. Yes, I get like unintentional stranded there or I'm like literally, you know, voluntarily going to the island. In which case, voluntarily, it will be myself because that's what I want, you know. I want the solitude, not the loneliness huh? because I don't get that. I like the solitude. But if I'm like crashed there, you know, again, I don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't understand the question. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you don't have a choice, if you're stuck there, you need to get out. Who would you want to have as a companion to help you out? I think I, think I, I, I would pick Rodel. <laughs> because we're from, we're, from, we're from tropical countries and we can work together to stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> More survival. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If intercultural nurse, right, helps survivability, I mean, sure, it's how I go for Christian. Whatever it is, we could all spend some time of an island together, right? <laughs> Actually, when all of you come to Singapore, you will spend time on an island together. 
<laughs> not deserted by sure as well as Alan. Okay, if we paint things um, to like a positive side, if you could live anywhere right now, you know, we've all been stuck in COVID, right? If you could live anywhere right now, where would it be? Oh, that's easy. I'll go to Malta. Or maybe something where I've never been before, I would probably pick maybe Canada. I really want to go there. An island near us, like Boracay Island. You know, I, after COVID and after seeing so many things and feeling so many things, and uh, I think where I would like to be is in a better version of myself. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> wow. Okay, everybody wants to train with her now. <laughs> 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 okay, so we have some very philosophical answers and like physical places. <laughs> but we are very good mix. There's always philosophical, there's always practical because, you know, you can't live without either, you know? Yeah, yeah and there's just some nonsense because <laughs> sometimes you just need nonsense. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, I mean, like, it's, the, it's the glue that, that just keeps you sane, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, switching a little bit from, like, um, what you guys would do recreationally, like, movies and being on deserted, deserted islands, um, professionally, what would you say is your favourite thing about your career so far? To be part of Practice Forte. Oh, oh Rodell. Wow, Rodell. You we are love getting you a cake for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you have a chance, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Christian's birthday is tomorrow, by the way. That's you right. Want your birthday cake? <laughs> yes, what's your answer? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, yeah, I think it's all the, the international training. Um, so in Japan and Lithuania, and I'm really looking forward to the trainings with you. So going to another country, meeting mediators uh, from a different background, uh, I learn so much each time and I like the exchanges. I'm surprised every time. It's of course, uh, there are nice, nice friends and colleagues in Germany, but um, there I'm not surprised that often I can expect what happens. And an international training, it's just wondrous each time I learn so much and hope I can teach a lot from my perspective uh, from Germany. So, yeah, so, so far I would say the trainings in Japan, but soon the trainings in Singapore and the area together with you. I, I think for me it's about being able to connect with people um, and being able to see how you know, when, when they get it, when they get something, um, an idea, a framework, a skill, and then they start to see a change, uh, actual change in, 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 in their lives or the way they communicate. That's something that always motivates me. Um, and that's what continues to, to make me, uh, you know, uh, give me energy to do what I do uh, when I work with people, whether students or professionals, you know. And of course, um, being able to work with, with friends and, and passionate individuals is always an inspiration. I think it's very hard to say uh, enjoy, right? Like the word enjoy is you've got to really love it every time. In everything that I do, there's always a lot of ups and downs. But perhaps if I can use the word meaning, right? What has been holding the most meaning for me, I think it's the, the work that I do in family law. Uh, whether as a lawyer or as a mediation advocate or even as a mediator. So I connect and, and for me, like Marcus, connection with people is very, very important. Um, helps that they teach me a lot and make a difference in their lives better, I hope. So that's one thing. The other thing about what Christian said also resonate with me because of what we do or what I do in family law, I can impart a lot of my experience, my knowledge, and that comes in when I train. Um, that's also always after a very good training session where I felt like, okay, some of what I say can mean something uh, to somebody or can help somebody. That's like always mm. fantastic experience for me. From the Smurf point of view, okay, everyone, you know, the Smurfs, right? They're the blue people, Smurfs. Or from the Avatar point of view. Um, 
I, I, I think all of us have, have played many roles in life, but I'm very conscious of the many roles I play in my life uh, and that either I have or I get thrust upon. And I don't know that I identify specifically with either being a trainer or I identify with being a lawyer or I identify with this. So I think, um, and, and you learn from so many people, so many things. I think what is um, what I'm happy with is that every time I'm into something, I'm happy to bring all that different perspectives with me. Um, sometimes it's garbled, but sometimes it's very relevant when, when you see something from either outside of yourself or from outside of itself. I think that really, um, I, f- I find it valuable for myself. And sometimes when I can see the similarities or the differences, the, the big picture is, is it, it, it comes and um, and, and how to connect. So I really know what, what Marcus is, is, is saying as well. So I, I and, and intercultural also uh, is, 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 is a bringing together of, of the perspectives, you know, in a very positive way. I mean, you can choose how you want to see difference or, you know, but um, I think once we know where we are headed, I think the positivity and how you explain and accept and understand and appreciate things, I think, I think that's really what I like about there's so many things that I try to do. The end. Me? <laughs> to to come out in the television and a TV program that I have. Because I wanted to come out in the TV and be watched by the people <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> so, and apart from that, I wanted to be a movie actor. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but honestly, oh, but yeah. honestly yeah. You make but a whole movie. That's what we yeah. do. <laughs> but honestly, it is it is fun working with people, different types of works that that you get along with different people from from like the television industry or to the workers in the farms or even to developmental developmental work for the advocacy work that we do and even travel. So I think meeting people is one best thing to happen in one's career. If you guys could go back in time, what year would you like to travel to? Oh, 2010. Oh, that's so specific. Okay, why? <laughs> because I, I did a three-month internship uh, at, with Banyan Tree and I could pick any resort I, I wanted to do the internship with, uh, mm-hmm. with. And I picked the Maldives. So I spent three months on an island in the Maldives or Maldives. Um, working with the marine lab, uh, growing corals, saving baby turtles, feeding manta rays, stingrays, um, and yeah, snorkeling, scuba diving every day. So, wow. so where, I met, where I met my wife, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Best three months of my life and I will definitely go back there if I can. Maybe any historic event you'd like to experience or any person in history you'd like to meet? Maybe not one specific, but again, I'm interested in history, and I would like the yeah to to experience some historic um, times and events and see how it goes. Actually, in Germany, there are many medieval uh, festivals on on castles and stuff. And when I was younger, actually, I went with my brother and friends. We went to these festivals and we were in costumes. So, so I think medieval times. Um, I would like to see how it really really was. Christian, I'm so surprised. That shows you how much we talk to each other about nonsense. But this is the first time I hear because I'm also very interested in medieval history. Um, but if I had to travel back, but you know, from the multi-perspective point of view, it's also a horrible time. <laughs> but what can I say? It depends where you look at it from. But I would really like to go back to uh, the, the uh, you know a classical period and and maybe hang out with some. Um, classical music composers are, which I, I, I do like classical music. So um, that's something I would, I like to talk to people whom I know I'll never be, la, you know. But don't, don't get me wrong, I have a lot of self-esteem. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not going to be like, you know, a big But I like to talk to them. It would have to be in English, yeah. <laughs> and, and listen to them, uh, be truthful without words. Yeah. This is a very hard question for me, Trifina, because I kind of don't really look back so much. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I I don't have a favorite time in history. I just feel like okay, maybe for fun, you know, if I can be Empress Dowager for the day, then that day lah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> how about, how about in the future, that, Susan? A point in the future. Yeah, where I can rule the whole galaxy, that would be nice <laughs> too. <laughs> Anything to do with uh, building Anything an empire, to do with world domination. Yeah, world so domination. Terrible, right? You your pattern. That's a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, la. To be honest, I don't think I envy. That's why I only want it for one day. Well, just like them, I wanted to to be in the medieval times or probably meet um, the philosophers like Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, like that. I wanted to talk to them, but but I don't want to go back to that time. I just wanted to go back to that time, and I just wanted to, to I just zoom them or something. Yeah, maybe, maybe just, yeah, maybe, just maybe, maybe the movie experience. But I wanted to go back to that time when I felt undecided, or when I just wanted to become a bartender in in a an island resort, and maybe from there discover more friends and just enjoy without necessarily thinking about the problems of the world, the problems of of uh, parties in a particular case or probably not settling cases. Oh, yeah, to, if, if I can just, you know, adapt your, your question to us a little bit. Uh, you know, I think it really helps sometimes if we are able to go back to one day in in a colleague's life, you know, or, or one day in the life of people we're trying to understand, you know, or, or one day in the life of people who are very different to us. I think, um, I think we'll learn uh, a whole lot. Just living one day of their life, it's just being in their shoes, and you know, uh, mm. yeah. Mm. yes, yeah, serious over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I just related to that. If you could have a superpower that could help you, um, be in your everyday life or in your role as a mediator, a trainer, or a lawyer, what would that be? No, I think about it just too often, but I got an answer already. <laughs> I also. I also. Your... I also. <laughs> I better see first. Whoever see first gets it. I watch X Men. I want to be the professor. Hello, me too. I want to be able to read the minds. I, I want. I want to be able to finish all my household chores with a snap of a finger. <laughs> oh. And that will help your mediation work. I see, Marcus. <laughs> yeah. I want to hold the the power to all the Wi-Fi connections and all that. So, I can control the world. Ah. <laughs> what about you, Christian? Uh, as a mediator, I think the, the like reading mind or the ability to understand, really understand somebody, really good. We try hard to do so, become better. But uh, if it's as a superpower and we understand everybody, maybe to change perspectives, to be able to see and understand the situation from somebody else's perspective. Yes. But that's not a, that's a lot of fun, right? Is it? So maybe it's everything. It's so of you, Christian, but that's exactly the same answer as me. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Um, you've all been trainers and mediators for a while now. Um, in like one sentence, if you could sum it up, why did you choose to become a trainer? Connection. Just one word, connection. Because we wanted to connect with, with, uh, with the reality, with the people, with some future, for some aspirations, or some beliefs that that you can do something good, something better, something big, not only for yourself but for the other people. I can relate to that as well. Mm. At this point in our lives, perhaps it's time to. Uh, I think it's also mentoring, <clears throat> sharing, yeah, for me. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and uh, my word is fun, but it stands for F-U-N and F is fulfilling for the reason said above. Uh, U is unique, every session is special and N is for nourishing because it really gives meaning to, to um, you know, the work when you see people able to benefit from it. But at the end of the day, it's still fun. That's why I do it. 
Uh, I can relate to all of what you said and agree. I think I like Nathan, uh, but to say, I try my own words, I would say um, maybe fas facilitation. I, I'm, it's a part of my nature to facilitate between people um, as a mediator, but also as a trainer. I, I, I am good at and I really like to facilitate between people and help them understand each other. That's um, it makes me happy if that works. If um, if I feel what what I contribute creates a, a space where learning and understanding can can happen, and this is just marvelous. And if I and then if I get this feedback, if people are happy about these moments and the learning and something like uh, Marcus said before, something changes in their lives and their personality, and there are these a half moment that makes me really, really happy. And I think that's very uh, part of my very nature. I think I agree with Adele uh, that there is the, you know, you feel inclined to want to communicate and, and you want to communicate because, you know, you believe and and you believe because you do, you know, and, and you feel that this is something you, you might be able to share with people. Um, and because you know, it's just maybe how you view the world and we all just love sharing our worldviews, don't we? <laughs> but I think it's a little bit of that, that we just want to want people to access what we feel may have worked to us in our lives or just, just believe that if we try and we've seen it happen and, you know, I, I think I think that's a lot of where a lot of us are coming from when we try to want to share this thing. Whether it's a form of um, articles, training, you know, or just conversation, dialogues, things like that, which I, I think always throws up more things as you go along. Yeah, that's, that's where I think you come from as a, as, as a group. <laughs>